Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. I'm Derek from Synet Nutrition and today we're gonna to be talking all about oils. So whenever I bring up the fact that I don't often use oils in my cooking or in my recipes, or if I'm making like some oil-free sauces or dressings, people often wonder why. Because as far as they're concerned, oil has always been touted as this like amazing magical health food and they just can't imagine why I'm not adding that to all my recipes. So today we're gonna to be talking all about that, why I don't use it in most of my cooking and in my recipes, uh, we'll talk about the oil that I do consume and also look at the nutrient content of oil versus some other foods. And we'll just try to get to the bottom of this, make some sense of it. So I went out to the forest the other day to answer this question from Rayston. But why oil free? Extra virgin olive oil is so useful for our body and health generally. And I wanted to include it in one of the sort of Q&A, Ask Me Monday style videos that I do. Um, however, I think this is such an important topic and I get asked this question so much. I figured that uh, I would just kind of scrap that sort of crappy Q&A that I did wandering around sweating in the forest and actually dedicate a whole video to this where I can kind of uh, explain it a little bit better because yeah, my thoughts were a little bit jumbled. And there were so many other good questions that I kind of crammed into that Q&A, I figured I could probably split this all up and do a single video for each topic. So that's what I'm gonna be doing and this is the first one that I'm gonna be tackling. So just to be clear, I'm not 100% oil free. I don't completely avoid it. Uh, I just try not to use it in my cooking. So it's definitely in like the tortillas that I'll consume. Sometimes in uh, mock meats that I'll have, there's definitely like some oils in there. If I buy like a store-bought sauce or salad dressing, cause I'm feeling a little bit lazy, there's definitely some in there as well. So it's not that I am completely oil free and I don't you know completely shy away from these products, but I'm just like not trying to increase my consumption of oil and I definitely don't consider it myself a health food. One of the reasons why I don't use it in my cooking is just because I don't really like it. I find food to be great without it, and once you get away from using oil consistently, you really don't have much of a taste for it anymore. Like, you actually kind of notice it in food, and you think, wow, this would be a lot better if it didn't have so much oil. And it's really a strange thing. Trust me, I used to love like all the fried foods and fatty foods and stuff, but yeah, once you stop eating it, you really do lose a taste for it. And the mouthfeel especially, it's like, food's just kind of like coated in it and it's like slippery. Yeah, not something I'm looking for. So to get used to cooking without oil, you definitely do have to adapt your cooking methods a little bit, you know? Like uh, maybe that means using a nonstick pan or a little bit of a water saute or just choosing what you fry. Uh, but you can definitely get around it and it's not that hard. If you guys are curious, I have made a video on like oil-free cooking and tips around that. <laughs> so if you want to check it out, I'll try and put one of those like cards here, here, uh, or you can check in the description box down below. So another reason is because it is just so dense in calories. I don't think people realize how dense oil is in calories. So one tablespoon of oil is 120 calories. So we'll pop into the kitchen in a little bit and compare that to other foods and look at it nutritionally to see like what it really looks like. So just a spoonful of oil in a recipe here or there to help your stir fry, yeah, it's not gonna be such a big deal. But I think the problem comes when people don't realize how much they use it. So, you know, you think about it, a splash of it in your stir fry, splash of it in your salad dressing or on your salad, then maybe a little bit in a sauce that you're having as well, maybe some oil and vinegar with some bread or something like that before dinner. And before you know it, it's really easy to consume a few extra hundred calories per day of oil that your body hardly even registers because it is definitely not very satiating. And I mean, just you can see how small of an amount 120 calories is. So it's not gonna fill you up at all. And um, you can just imagine that as you, you know, times this by all the meals you eat per day and then per week and then per month and per year, you're gonna be consuming a lot of excess calories. And once I show you guys, I think you're gonna realize that you could be using these calories much more wisely for much more, you know, using them with much more nutritious foods. And that's the other thing, it doesn't even come packed with nutrients. So let's pop into the kitchen, we'll look at the nutrients in some olive oil and then we'll compare it to some other foods, see if there might be some better options. So like I mentioned, one tablespoon, which is this much of olive oil, is around 120 calories. So let's have a look at it in chronometer and see what kind of nutrition we're getting from this 120 calories of oil. So you can see that there's not a whole lot going on here as far as nutrition goes. So yeah, there's a little bit of vitamin E, a little bit of vitamin K, but virtually no other vitamins, no minerals, no fiber, no protein, just fat. 
And if you break down the fats, it doesn't even have a very good omega-6 to 3 ratio. So we know that we want to get that as close to 1 to 1 as we can. Something like 4 to 1, 5 to 1, 6 to 1 is probably more realistic and attainable. However, the 13 to 1, 6 to 3 ratio of olive oil is definitely not going to help us get there. And olive oil is about 14% saturated fat, and that goes for most plant oils. They're between 12 and about 20% saturated fat, and uh, I don't think a lot of people realize that. And of course, that doesn't count for coconut oil. Don't even get me started about coconut oil. <laughs> Use it in the occasional dessert, put it on your skin, but it's not a health food. So I think it'd be good to look at 120 calories of some other foods, some other fatty foods, to see maybe how olive oil compares to some other things. So let's check out maybe avocado first. So about half an avocado is 120 calories. And you can see that you get quite a bit more nutrition in that than you do of the olive oil. So let's look at hemp seeds. 120 calories of hemp seeds is about two and a quarter tablespoons. And you can see there's so much more nutrition in this. I mean, you get like 20% of your RDI of iron. There's protein in there, fiber, B vitamins, lots of minerals. And let's look at chia seeds. So two and a half tablespoons will bring you up to that 120 calories. There's definitely some good nutrition in it. Lots of omega-3s, four grams of protein, some B vitamins, tons of vitamin K, some calcium, half of my RDI of iron. So I mean, yeah, this is already looking a lot better, if you ask me. And then let's look at flaxseed. So to get to 120 calories, you would need to consume three and a quarter tablespoons. And again, definitely quite a bit more nutrition here. Way better omega-3 to 6 ratio. And then let's have a quick look at tahini, which is basically just like sesame seeds that have been ground up. So tahini is very dense in calories. You can see almost as much as oil. You get 1.3 tablespoons for that 120 calories, but there's definitely more nutrition in it than in the olive oil. So just to further demonstrate the caloric density, you get the same amount of calories in five medium carrots as you would in this one tablespoon of oil. And then look at the nutritional difference. Like, it is just crazy. Half a cup of black beans, same amount of calories. One medium sweet potato. I mean, that's a no-brainer for me. <laughs> I would eat this all day over this tiny little amount of oil. So I don't know, I just don't see it. Like oil has the worst calorie to nutrient ratio of any food. But one thing that it does have in it, and we've been told this time and time again, is antioxidants. Extra virgin olive oil has got to be a good source of antioxidants, right? So there's a scale used to summarize the amount of antioxidants in a food, and it is called the ORAC score, and it stands for oxygen radical absorbance capacity. And while it doesn't differentiate between different antioxidants, uh, it does kind of give you just like a general score of how much antioxidants are in a single food. So here we have a chart of the ORAC values of different foods, and this was prepared by the US Department of Agriculture and published in November in 2007. And it actually gives olive oil the highest score of any ORAC score that I've seen for olive oil. So this is definitely the most generous list that I found for it, but it does seem to be the most complete one as well. So we'll be able to compare it to some other foods. So as I search for olive oil, you can see that it is pretty far down the list. Uh, it has an ORAC score of 1,150. And then as I scroll up, you can just see how many foods there are above that that have more antioxidants. And you know that these foods are also going to have a lot more minerals, vitamins, protein, fiber, all that attached to them as well. And the crazy thing too is as we're looking at this, you have to remember that this is for 100 grams of food. So 100 grams of olive oil is like 800 calories. So you're not even going to be consuming near this much olive oil. So it you know, you're not even going to be getting nearly that much antioxidants. And then when you compare it to something like 100 grams of an apple, that's just like half an apple and 50 calories. So I don't know, but hopefully I don't seem as crazy to you guys anymore for not dumping oil all over my foods. But if you want to consume oil and you like cooking with it or you feel great with, you know, when you're consuming it or you enjoy the taste of it or you're just trying to get in tons of calories and it's, you know, the best way for you to do it or whatever your reasoning might be, hey, you do you and you enjoy what you're doing. As long as you're feeling great, you're not hurting anyone, I don't have a problem with it. So I'm just highlighting my point of view on it and then hopefully, you know, it makes my oil-free cooking make a little bit more sense to you guys. 
So I'm clearly not like a connoisseur or some professional on different types of oils, but one thing that I do know is that you want to try and consume oil that has the least amount of processing. Uh, and that is going to be your cold pressed extra virgin olive oil. Uh, organic if you can find it, even better. But uh, yeah, this is going to be your best bet. If you are going to cook with it, you want to keep the heat, you know, at around low to medium heat because it does have a fairly low smoke point. If you're going to be frying with an oil, I understand that avocado oil has a very high smoke point. It's probably one of the better oils for that, but it is going to be more processed than your cold pressed olive oil. But if you are going to be consuming oils, you want to get the best quality oil that you can because oils do tend to go rancid and you don't want to be consuming rancid oils. That just means that all those antioxidants have oxidized and now they're going into your body as oxidation. You don't want that. I remember Crystal and I, we used to get this flaxseed from a really reputable company. It was actually at a supplement store I was working at at the time and we get it shipped in, you know, dark bottles it's packed with like ice so it was nice and cold and everything. We put it right on the shelf. I'd buy it and like three out of the the four bottles I remember buying were rancid, like they smelled fishy as soon as you opened them. And that was like a really good organic, high quality, cold pressed flaxseed oil. So that's why I think we should probably just eat the food itself. Just eat the avocado, just get some olives, eat some walnuts, chia, flax, hemp, you know, those are all really healthy fats. You get lots of nutrition from them, lots of fat from them. What else do you need? <laughs> so then Heidi Scott has to come along and ask the difficult questions. How do you justify protein powder when you accuse oil of being highly refined? I'm down with the criticism of oil, but protein powder is also a highly processed food. Heidi, you got me. <laughs> no, I'm joking. This is definitely a question that I've wanted to address for a long time because I do see the hypocrisy in it and I think it's an important thing to talk about. So I don't know if you guys have noticed, but you know, one of my goals is to be you know, lean, athletic, a little bit muscular. And, you know, for me, consuming a concentrated source of like liquid fat isn't going to help me get towards my goals. Like I consume enough fat through the whole food sources, you know, through having some avocado with my meals or some um, tahini dressing or nuts and seeds or peanut butter on toast or whatever, where I'm not trying to get more fat in by the end of the day. So sometimes it's nice that you can bump your protein consumption up by 20 or 25 grams without having to consume a lot more extra bulk. Like, you know, you probably have to consume about a cup and a half or more of black beans in order to get that same amount of protein when I'm just like putting it in my smoothie and not even noticing it. So uh, yeah, that's kind of my justification, but you know, I do see the hypocrisy in it. So, you know, I take those shots when they come. <laughs> so I know some of you are thinking right now, I got them. Derek's admitting you can't get enough protein on a vegan diet, so you have to supplement it. Well, no, obviously that's not the case. And you guys know that. I mean, if that you're gonna use that logic, then just the fact that whey protein powder exists and is in all the supplement stores <laughs> all around the world would then demonstrate the fact that the omnivorous diet doesn't have enough protein, but we know that's not the case. Whether you're a vegan athlete or an omnivorous athlete or whatever, you know, many people consume protein powder just to try and get that edge, you know, try and get a little bit more muscle growth, a little bit better recovery, whatever it might be. And for me, if that means I can just add a little scoop of protein powder that I enjoy and I feel great consuming rather than having to have an extra like cup and a half or cup or three quarter beans at the end of the day to get that extra 20 or 25 grams. Well, yeah, I definitely welcome. It. I mean, I eat the beans and everything else as well. Don't get me wrong. So I hope that clears it up and I hope you guys learned something. So, you know, no shade to anybody. If you want to consume oil and you enjoy it and you're killing it and you're 10 times bigger than me and way stronger or whatever, well, I'm happy that you have found something that works for you. So I think that's probably it for this video. You guys will have to let me know your comments in the comment section down below. What do you think of oil? Am I right? Am I like way off with this? Is there something I'm not seeing? I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. You guys know it helps me out so much in the algorithm and I appreciate it. Definitely subscribe so you can see more from me and I will see you guys soon with another video. Bye-bye.